day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. It's through Jesus Christ. That's why I like the fact of being a believer in Jesus Christ. Because all have said it comes from the glory of God. By it individually as well as collectively. And yes, there's no justification for bad things that people have done. And and it, you can we can hide it from one another, but it, the, the history is gonna come anyway. You know, the truth, the research, everything else is gonna show uh, I ain't all that in the bag of potato chips. I thought I was. Somebody taught me that I'm based, I'm, I'm supposed to be, uh, you know, how, you know, I talk about racism and stuff. Some people sit there and say, well, I, I was taught that I'm superior. I was taught that what I say, uh, black or brown or white, uh, that, that it means that I'm, I'm, I'm glorified in God. Huh? Meaning that I'm, 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 if some people sit there and say, well, based on the color of skin, I have purity. Even the fact is that the, nobody has the color of skin that even equals purity. All of us have melanin in our skin. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, none of us are pure of this or pure of that, right? I mean, I'm called, I'm called a, 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 a black man, right, in this country, or an African American in this country, right? But when you just talk about the fact is that you still, when you talk about the color of my skin, I think it's, it's, it looks brown, right? If you look at it, right? And it's very rare that you see somebody that is this, this, this jet black, right? They, they have some level of, of color that's lighter than the pure color of black. And same thing with the white, just, you know, you, you, you put a white person against a white board, you can find out that the, uh, they stick out. Why? Because that's not the actual color of a person. But we, we sometimes we bring these colors in to say, well, you know, that, you know, I some people lately you talk about, well, the Jews were black, so therefore that, that that's a positive color. Well, some will sit there and paint uh, Jesus white based on the European color. And then they say, well, Jesus was European, so therefore we're on the righteous side. And, and we know that, that that's not true. Either, either way, it's not true. Because it, it was never about the color of, of Jesus. It was never about the color of the Jews. It was never about the color of the saints. See, we want to try to put colors and, and try to define people and put them in a box because we think that that makes us feel better. But the problem is that if you're not in Christ and if you are commonly minded, you're not in the spirit, then, then that means you're not of God. Regardless, you're not of God if you operate in the flesh or you think from a fleshy point of view. So let's not get involved with the flesh because in my flesh, he said in my flesh, verse 18, in my flesh dwells no good thing. So we, so anybody that try to, to promote themselves based on the flesh, listen what the scripture says. If you base yourself on the flesh, he said there's no good thing that dwells in you. Verse 20, now if I do that which I will not, is no more I that do it but sin that dwells where? In my flesh, in me. I find then a law that, that when I will do good, evil what present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. That's the spirit man. That's the spirit of man, right? That's what I delight myself. Because when I try to do it in the flesh, I find that evil is present with me. And we don't want, we don't want to get caught up in that, okay? Just think about that. I'm just read the scriptures, a study for yourself. Do I find any benefit of basing my righteousness after flesh? Or do I base my righteousness after the spirit? Or do I even think that God is only looking at one particular color of flesh? We know it's not true. And we know we've done bad things. 
But you know what? Those who have had bad things done to them, turn over to God. Those who have done bad things or historically done bad things, turn over to God. Because there is where you get your uh, blessing from. It's from him. See, we look at our blessings from other people on this. Look at this in Genesis 1.26. Because I think it's very important here. It says, and God said, let us make man what? In our image. After what? Our likeness. Now, most people sit there and say, see, that's talking about a tangible look, right? He said, let them have the meat over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creepy thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of who? Of God. Has any man seen God? Is God made of flesh? Has any man seen God? Is God of the flesh? And that's why when you do science, they said they didn't try to focus on saying, well, I can't, I can't prove God because I can't apply the senses. I can't apply, I can't apply the physics with God. That's cognitive minded. And if we sit there and try to think God is cognitive or something that, that you can see in the flesh, you're going to miss God. We're made in the image of God. Therefore, if we're made in the image of God, we know that it's not the physical part of us. Even though people want to put that down there, right? That's what some people want to do. But God, let's figure, let's go. I got next scripture to show you. But the bottom line is, we're made in the image of God. And if no man has seen God, then what is the image of God? Could the image of God be the flesh based on the color of skin, based on the height, right? What image? It says in likeness, right? And God blessed them and God said them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Meaning, let's, hey, I'm, for something happened and God said, you want to replenish the earth. You can't replenish without first plenish, right? <laughs> so it's plentiful of us at one time, but something did happen. And we're talking about that's another stuff to so myself. Replenish the earth, redo something, right? And subdue it, get control of it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that creepers upon it, the creepers or movers on the earth. And Genesis 2 7, look at this now. I, I think it's important to you catch this piece. Let me come off for a second. I don't want to come off for a second. The verse I'm getting ready to read is very important for you. Maybe some of you have read it and didn't and, and did read over it. But we're going to read Genesis 2 7. And I want you to understand that. I just read Genesis 1 28, right? Verse 28, it said, let us make man our own image, right? Let's look at 2 7. Because if we're made in the image of God, maybe we will get an understanding from this verse of what image was he talking about. So let's look at that. And, and please study that. Milk it. Study me. I need to study. Read that thing over and over and over again so that you get understanding of what is being said in 2 7. What was being said from 20, Genesis 1, 26 to 28, when he said, let us make man our own image. And if we're made in the image of God, let's get out, let's see where that description of man creation, what part of that image that God is talking about. Look at that. And God formed man of the dust of the ground. He formed man of what? Of the dust of the ground. See, that, see, we, God is not dust of the ground. He formed man. He built an earth suit for man from the dust of the ground. 
God is saying he's dust, did he? But look at this. And then God breathed. And I remember one, one young lady a long time ago when Bible study said he breathed air. You know, when you breathe air in a dead man, go, go to the go to the uh, funeral parlor and breathe air into a dead man. Uh, you can see if he gets up. Because he's been formed from the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. He breathed his essence. He breathed his spirit. He didn't breathe air because, like I said, I've, I've challenged every last one of you. You want to be scientific anyway, right? Those of you that are science and cardinal, go get an air tank and let's take it to somebody in the, in the, uh, in the, in the funeral parlor. Let's see if he gets up. He's formed, right? You can see a shell of a person. Let's breathe into it. Let's breathe into somebody who, who died on operation table. Let's put some air in them as they've been declared dead and see if, they, see if they're going to get up. And, and matter of fact, what, is air the breath of life? Air is air. But it is the breath of life. The breath of life is the spirit. God breathed into man the, in his nostrils the spirit of life. And then what? Man became a living soul. The conscious, the essence of man. That, that's, that's his spirit, his soul. But he all that came after this breath of life. The breath of life brought that soul into being, that individual. That's what you are individually, is based on your spirit, based on the spirit of God creating you. And now you're a living soul. Living soul is, you know, it's, it's not tangible. You have a brain, if you want to call that, but he didn't say the brain. He said soul, the soul of man. That's, that's who you are. You know? And that soul is spiritual. Have you ever said this? Have you lost your mind? <laughs> and you sit right in front of me, right? So it can't be my, my mind is not my brain. My brain is what I use to function for this body. But my mind is, is my individual content of me. So look at that when you read first uh, Genesis 2 7 again. Just think of that God formed man of the dust of the ground. God is not dust. So the image could not be the dust, but what was breathed into the nostrils is the spirit of God. And, and then man became a living soul, right? Now I know some of you are going to sit there and say, no, 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 no. Well, you, you go ahead with your bad self and say that was air. Get an air tank. Like I said, you can call it if you want to. Where you get the air tank from? No, it's, it's, it's the spirit. His essence of who he is. That's the image of him that was breathed into man, into the, the that was formed from the dust. But again, God is not dust. God is not flesh. Our flesh is with reference to the dust of the ground. That's what we're formed out of, right? Ashes are ashes, dust to dust. That's what we return to. So when he said made the image, it's not the dust, it's the spirit. Amen? All right, now. To, to, to go into that. And like I said, the scripture again is said, and Jesus said unto those Jews who believe in him, if you continue where in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Look at this one. We just read Genesis 2 7. Look at this for you. And I I'm glad those are just listening. That's good, but we get a chance to get scriptures in John 4 24. Chew on it. Study on this right here, this word right here. It says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in the spirit in, in truth, which is the word God. See that? How can I worship him in the spirit unless I am a spirit being? I was formed. You were formed. We were birthed from that which we were formed from. 
which is the dust of the ground. And that's what you'll go back to, is the dust of the ground. You see what I'm saying? Is the, you know, the Bible says ashes to ashes, dust to dust. When, when this body, there's a lot of people who died thousands and thousands of years, they're dust. Because that's where, that's what he, that's what the elements in our skin is basically dust. That's what it looked like if you decompose long enough. <laughs> if you're not put in a casket that got a seal tight, you know, box, you, you, your body would decompose and eventually become dust. The thing that take long is a skeleton, but the flesh quickly starts to decompose. And if it's not preserved, it's going to turn back to the dust of the ground. That is a scientific proven outcome. This flesh, there's people in graves right now. Don't say the people in the grave, their bodies are not, did not go to heaven or hell. They're still in the ground. That's why when you talk about say God is a spirit being, and that's why you say we were made in the image of God, we're made in the image of the spirit, because we're spirit beings. And therefore, you got to recognize that that's what you are. You are worship God in the spirit. You are spiritual beings that's housed in a flesh. Now, for those who don't know that, that's what you got to say. That's why I say I don't want you. I think we're going to deal with racism and division and everything else. We need to be able to recognize that if we keep looking at man without the appearance, where well, God judges the heart, we're going to keep missing it. And we're going to keep having divisions and, 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 and pull away from one another from time to time because we are looking at the outward appearance instead of the inward appearance and understand that we're made in the image of God and the image of God is a spirit. That's what the scripture says right there, right? John 4, 24. God is a what? God is a spirit. That's what we talk about spirituality. God is a spirit and that's how you're supposed to operate. That's how you're supposed to look at yourself. You are a spirit being. That's why when people pass away, we say that they're no longer here. We see their flesh, we see their body, but we always talk about they're going up you know, high into heaven. How? So, so what happened? It's the spirit of man because God is a spirit. We're made in the image of God, meaning we are spiritual beings. Come on, people. Stop teaching your children about the outward appearance. Stop teaching division based on the outward appearance. Stop teaching character people are, are, are murderers and rapers based on the color of their skin. And, and, and if you're not because of the color of your skin, that no, 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 no. See, every person on this earth, oh, every ethnic group on this earth have killers in it, have murderers in it. But you know what? Every group on this earth have good people too. But it's not based on our flesh. It's not based on our appearance. It's based on the spirit. God is a spirit. Those who worship must worship the spirit and the truth. In just Galatians 3, 27 and 29, for as many of you have, as have been baptized into Christ have what? Put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all what? One in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and what? Heir according to the promise. But it's all about a spiritual understanding. The spirituality. Our faith is spiritual. Not cardinal. I know we've been taught that. I know we've been taught that over and over again. But we need to sit there and recognize we're spiritual beings. I like this scripture here. And as we're starting to close up, it says, a living stone in a holy people. Wherefore, lay it aside look, all malice. Don't teach your children malice. All gal. Don't teach your children a lie. All in hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking. If you're teaching your children that, you are cardinal. And you're teaching your child to be cardinal. 
And the Bible said that if you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. If you're in the flesh, you are numb of God. You've got to get past this flesh thing. Okay.